Hi everyone! Exchange rate changes and their impact is something I covered before, a video worth looking at, but this is slightly more advanced now. Could be some, covering some of the, the same kind of points, but it's slightly more detailed, so let's have a go. If a currency appreciates in value, you need to think to yourself, okay, spiced. Spiced tells you everything you could possibly need to know as to what you need to write and what you need to draw in terms of a diagram. A strong pound or a strong currency imports cheap, exports dear. On a diagram, that tells you if imports are cheaper, exports are more expensive, net exports in the economy are likely to decrease. And as net exports is a component of AD, AD is likely to shift to the left, as this diagram shows. But imports being cheap also implies that firms that import raw materials to produce in the economy are going to benefit from cheaper imports, cheaper uh, commodity prices in terms of lower import prices. So that will reduce their cost of production, shift SRAS to the right, and lower cost push inflation as well on that side. So when it comes to uh, your analysis here, your for and against points, let's have a look. So straight away, it looks like there are more issues than benefits when it comes to an appreciating exchange rate. Lower growth, you can see here, this uh, diagram pretty much dominates when we look at growth. Lower growth, uh, that kind of stems from the exports falling. It stems from the fact that the current account position is likely to worsen, maybe go into deficit. Um, so lower growth, higher unemployment. And when it comes to higher unemployment, we can be more specific. Higher unemployment in exporting industries, of course, who are going to suffer now because exports are more expensive. Demand for exports likely to fall away. But also higher unemployment in domestic industries. Domestic firms now have to compete with cheaper imports from abroad, which makes it difficult for them. If they can't compete, they may need to sack workers as a result. So potential higher unemployment there as well. But there are some benefits. You can see lower demand pull inflation and also lower cost push inflation, which is good for the economy. Uh, cheaper imports are good for consumers. So consumers that want to see an increase in their material living standards, well now it becomes easier to import goods and services from abroad, which can improve their happiness, improve their material standards of living. And the potential here is for domestic producers to gain potentially from efficiency benefits. Now having to compete with cheaper imports, these domestic firms may well look to cut costs elsewhere, look to gain increased competitiveness uh, to compete. So you might see efficiency gains which may translate into lower prices in the economy as well going forward. That's good for, uh, that's good for firms and it's also very good for consumers. Okay, let's now look at a depreciation of the exchange rate. When we think depreciation, we just need to think WIDEC. WIDEC. Weak currency imports expensive, imports dear, exports cheaper. Right. In theory, that should well uh, increase aggregate demand. Um, why? Because it means that X minus M in the aggregate demand equation may well increase. Uh, with imports more expensive, demand for imports falls, expenditure on imports falls, exports cheaper, demand for exports goes up. Revenue generated from exports, in theory, should go up. That should increase X minus M, which increases aggregate demand, shifts it right, and we see a major benefit here of increased growth. So, an increase in growth in the economy is a huge benefit as a result of a reduction in the exchange rate, depreciation of the exchange rate. So, AD shifts to the right, but also SRES may well shift to the left with more expensive imports. Firms that need to import raw materials will see an increase in costs. Those imports become more expensive, increasing the cost of production, shifting SRS to the left, um, which could harm the economy as well. So two kind of effects to look at there. Both diagrams are necessary in an exam. Um, so this one dominates, you could say, for growth. I mean, it depends on the economy, whether the economy has a strong exporting base or not. If it does, then this effect may well dominate that one. But anyway potentially growth increases from an increase in AD, but also you see a gain in employment. Employment increases. Why? Because industries that export will see an increase in demand. We'll see, therefore, an increase in the reason to produce more, which requires more labour to produce that extra output. Also, domestic industries. Now, uh, competition falls away. Imports are more expensive, so chances are consumers may well switch. Instead of buying imports, they'll now buy domestic goods and services instead, which are relatively cheaper. So therefore, domestic firms may see a gain here and need to increase employment to match the increase in demand. However, there are problems here of higher inflation, higher demand pull inflation, and higher cost push inflation as well. So bear that all in mind. And when it comes to evaluation, you've got to consider a few key things. You've got to consider um, 
the extent to which the exchange rate has changed, whether it's an appreciation or a depreciation. Uh, how much has the exchange rate risen or fallen? That's an important consideration. Another one is the price elasticity of demand for exports and imports. We talk about the Marshall-Lenner condition, about the J-curve effect. If you're not sure about those uh, conditions, watch my video explaining that. But more simply, if that's not part of your course, just know that the PED for exports and imports is important in determining whether the revenue generated from exports will actually rise or fall, and whether the expenditure on imports will actually rise or fall. And maybe, uh, because of the inelastic demand for exports and imports, the actual effect will be against what the theory suggests. It also depends on whether there are restrictions on trade, so maybe protectionism may restrict some of the impacts, especially of a, a weaker exchange rate. Uh, your exports might be cheaper, but there are, if there are trade restrictions put on your goods, on exporting your goods abroad, that might reduce some of the, the benefits here. So some key considerations to make before we come to overall conclusions. Thanks for watching guys, see you all next time.